One. Okay. Good afternoon. Happy St. Patty's Day to everyone and to you out in Zoom land. Um, the committees on water land and the Committee on Agriculture and Environment and the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs is going into its hearing notice for Wednesday, March 17th in room 229. And we also welcome all of those um, advocates out there as well in Zoom land. Uh, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to the viewing options for all of the Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. Uh, and just to add that in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the three committees will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1.01 p.m. on Monday, March 22nd in room 229 and on YouTube. Uh, a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website if this hearing is to be delayed. And for those of you um, remotely via Zoom, um, the testifier audio is muted and the video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. And at this time, all testifiers um, has a limit of two meetings, uh, two minutes. Um, and members, um, let's see, uh, chair recognizes, we do have uh, Senator uh, Revere here and we have our rest of our committees. Uh, Senator Favela uh, is on Zoom with us as well. And I believe Senator Misa Lucha and Senator um, Agaran will be on Zoom as well or in person. Uh, members, let's um, c continue on with HB 1352. And this is relating to surplus military land. Uh, it requires the Office of Planning to submit a report to the legislature containing an inventory of lands within the state that are leased or controlled by the federal government. Uh, secondly, any known contaminants or environmental hazards associated with the inventoried lands based on past environmental studies. And third, input from the executive branch departments and agencies on proposed alternative uses for the lands that will be consistent with their mission should the lands be returned to the state. And lastly, uh, its findings and recommendations, including proposed legislation based on this information. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Office of Planning, uh, Mary Ellis, are you on uh, ready to tell us how you feel about this measure? Yes, I am, Senator. Good to um, see you. Welcome, and thank you um, to uh, Chair Inouye, Chair Gabbard. Um, the Office of Planning appreciates the intent of Office 1352 HD1 uh, and offers a revision for clarity on page two. Um, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Okay, and members, I uh, will continue our process for the Committee on Water Land after each testifier. If you have any questions, uh, feel free while they're available with us. Um, and so, um, anyone has questions of Mary Ellis on uh, Office of Planning? Um, uh, if not, uh, let's proceed with uh, the testifying um, for the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party, uh, Melody Aduha, or representative of the Democratic mm. Party. Uh, Melody, are you there? Or uh, who's speaking for Democratic Party? Um, so then, just to let you know, uh, members, there are 14 uh, total, uh, including all those support uh, of this measure, uh, no opposition. <coughs> Chair would like to entertain any questions at this time on Senator Gabbard or Senator um, Nishihara, if you do have. Otherwise, um, 
uh, both chairs, are you ready to go then into decision making? I see the okay. nod there, Senator. Um, Nishihara, it's okay with you as well? Okay. Um, members, the Triple Committee uh, on Water Land, Co Committee on Agriculture and Environment, and the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs is going into decision making, will be in recess. Good afternoon again, the committees on water and land, the committee on agriculture and environment, and the public safety, intergovernmental and military affairs are going into decision making, uh, has decided and uh, making some recommendation on HB 1352, House Draft 1. Uh, and members, um, Chair's recommendation is to pass uh, HB 1352, House Draft 1, with a Senate Draft 1, and these are the proposed changes that we'd like to do. Um, we'd like to take Office of Planning uh, amendments that's um, on page 2, line 3, change leased from the federal government, as it reads now, to leased to the federal government. Um, the second uh, amendment that we um, agree on is to take the OHA amendments, and this suggested language is on page 2, line 16, to read as follows. Agencies and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs on remediation and restoration needs and on proposed alternative uses for the lands. Um, any discussion? Okay, the Committee on Water and Land Chair recognizes the Vice Chair Agaran as well as the attendance of Chair, I mean, um, Senator Misalucha here for c committee um, is to pass, um, SD, uh, to pass HB 1352 with an SD1. Chair votes aye. Right, Chair's recommendation to pass with amendments. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Misalucha? Aye. Senator Revere? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Okay, got you. Uh, thank you, um, Committee on uh, Agriculture and the Environment. Same recommendation for AEN. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Nishihara? Aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Rhodes? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Thank you, members. The measure passes eight. Okay. Public safety, state recommendation, chair of both eyes, and English. Use Ben Baker. Ben Baker. <laughs> Thumbs up. <coughs> She's I. Aye. 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 Oh, okay. Thank you. Ben Revere. Aye. Ben Favela. Aye. Okay, thank you. Committees on Agriculture and the Committee of PSM appreciates that. Um, and I think uh, public safety is departing, IT. Yeah. Oh, are you on um, Committee on Agriculture? I'm on oh, okay. I'm on All right. Eggs. Sorry about that. Um, no All right. We'll proceed then, and I think ID you. Do we have to do another countdown and repeat ourselves for this next hearing? We don't. No, okay. You can, you All can right. Continue, Senator. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Committee on Ag, are you ready, Senator Gabbard, to continue then with both? Um, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, aloha again. I, we'd like to welcome you to the 105 um, agenda item for the Committee on Water and Land and the Committee on Agriculture and Environment on Wednesday, March 17th 
um, hearing notice in room 229, and we welcome those uh, out there in Zoom land to this hearing as well. Just to, just to, re just to repeat ourselves, um, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamlined live on YouTube. You will find the links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major difficulties, technical difficulties, uh, both committees will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 105 on Monday, March 22nd, in this room 229 and on YouTube. A public notice will be posted on the legislature's website is if this hearing is to be delayed. And for those of you testifying, your audio is muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. And for testifiers, you will be limited to two minutes. Um, all right, we'll proceed then with the um, agenda on HB 469. And this is relating to the transfer of non-agriculture Parklands. <clears throat> okay, sorry, folks, looking for my call sheet. Staff, I got four, six, nine. Where's the um, this one? Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe we're looking for a call sheet. Um, I think it's uh, DLNR is first up on this measure, 469. Can you put it up on mine then? Can you put it up on mine? Good. Okay. DLNR, Russell G. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, chairs and vice chairs. This is Kevin Moore with Land Division, DLNR. Okay, aloha, uh, Kevin. Hi, the <clears throat> department submitted written testimony uh, quite lengthy on this measure, um, but to distill that down, what the department would really like to see happen is um, the substance of this measure be replaced with our amendment B, which is attached to the testimony. And amendment B is really a restatement of two other, well, two companion bills that were introduced this session as administration measures. And those are House Bill 1014 and Senate Bill 1168, neither of which crossed over. So um, these are not new, uh, not a new proposal that we're submitting. These have been heard in, in other committees in this session. And what, what this, but, Amendment B would allow the department to do is, is give it powers to extend leases, which is something um, that the, the department has some power currently to do, but for um, agricultural leases, it would be um, limited at, at 65 years. Um, but more importantly, the, um, the amendment would allow us to directly negotiate leases um, pasture leases with existing tenants, you know, so when, if a pasture lease came to the end of its term, the department could negotiate a new pasture lease with that tenant. And it allows the department to get away from fair market rent because right now any lease the department issues has to be, um, the rent has to be determined by appraisal at fair market. But what Amendment B does is allow the department to look at various factors on a pasture lease, such as um, any restrictions on grazing or other benef beneficial use of the land, and any conservation or stewardship services that the lessee will perform under a new lease to set <clears throat> rent that could be below fair market. So that's basically the department's position on this bill. We're available for questions. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, we're going to hear from others yet. Will you and Russell then continue to remain on then as well? Sure. Okay, well, I like what you're saying already, so there may be questions, but that's a good change. That's a big change, actually, from the agency. Um, 
Okay, let's hear from um, uh, Department of Agriculture. Aloha, Chair. Aloha to you. <clears throat> uh, Vice Chairs and members of the committees, Ophelia Geyser, Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Uh, we'll stand on our written testimony, offering comments, um, and um, just to highlight um, a concern is, you know, uh, if there is going to be an establishment of a third party advisory um, committee to re to render a decision, uh, the department believes that the agricultural interests must be adequately represented in the establishment member selection and decision making guidelines of the third party advisory committee. And we also um, comment um, that uh, the mandatory dispute resolution timeline um, place a reasonable time frame in which to resolve the dispute. Thank you. Okay, thank you as well. And most of your comments on, on the bill itself as written, yeah? Okay, uh, next up, let's hear from, um, let's see, uh, Ulupono. Micah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair Inouye, Chair Gabbard, Mike Munikata here on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. We stand on our written testimony supporting the intent. Uh, you know, for us, we actually support the original version of this bill, Huffle 469. I know that there's been quite a bit of conversations around this topic, and um, you know, ranchers have tried to come to the table with DLNR, and I think that you know there are some amendments within their testimony which we defer to. Um, to kind of meet that compromise. So we're supportive of those amendments there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your input. Um, the Cattlemen's Association or Council, Nicole, are you there representing the uh, Council? Yes, thank you, Chair Inouye, Chair Gabbard, uh, members of the committee. As stated in our written testimony, we support HB 469 in its original form which allowed DLNR to make claims for the leases they needed to keep for their mission and included a deadline for Act 90. Um, we do have concerns about HD1 because it leaves everything kind of a status quo allowing any disputed land to stay with DLNR, which has been the issue for the past 18 years. Um, we do appreciate DLNR's testimony stating the state's efforts to reach carbon neutral, but I wanna point out that well-managed rangelands can sequester carbon while at the same time producing food. So that means we can produce food in a way that also contributes positively to climate change. Um, so I think that we should be looking at rotational grazing and um, regenerative ranching to sequester carbon where ranchers are actively working and then turn to reforestation in areas where they're not currently used to be producing food. Um, we should remember that you know, the purpose of Act 90 was to ensure long-term food production. So where there's active agriculture, I, I hope that we prioritize managing for food production rather than looking to converting that land to forest. Um, I also want to address DLNR's worry that the conservation management done by ranchers is voluntary um, and that there's no assurance that it'll continue. Yes, that's true, it is voluntary, but the ranchers steward the land well because it has a direct effect on their operation. They need to sustain a business and that's the reason they perform um, things like invasive species removal wild ungulate control, rotational grazing. They need to answer to a bottom line in order to continue their ranching business. And I think that's a significant impetus to care for the land on top of it being the right thing to do for future generations. Thank you so much for hearing this measure. Mahalo. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Nicole, as well. Uh, let's hear from uh, Farm Bureau. Uh, Brian Miyamoto. Good afternoon, Chair Inouye. And Gabbard, Vice Chairs, Dalgaran, and Nishiar. I'm Brian Yamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have our written testimony uh, in front of you. Uh, I just wanted uh, to point out that we also do prefer the language in the original HB 469. We do appreciate the efforts, Chair, of yourself, uh, Chair Gabbard, and many others to try to come to some type of agreement or compromise. Um, but again, we do uh, support the original language. Um, we do, however, support if the, the bill is going to move forward in this form, the proposed amendments by the Hawaii Cattlemen Council. Um, again, 
18 years is quite a while. Uh, we hope that the intent of Act 90, Section Laws 2003, can be fully implemented and executed. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, Local Food Coalition, John Garibaldi. Hello, Chairs, Vice Chairs, and members of the committees. Uh, my name is John Garibaldi with the Local Food Coalition. We will stand on our written testimony in support. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, that's all we have for testifying um, members and um, Chair Gabbard, any questions that you'd like to ask of any of the uh, uh, testifiers before us? No, I'm good. You're Thanks, good. Chair. Members, um, Waterland, uh, Sen yes, Senator Revere. Thank you. Um, Department of Agriculture, please. Hello. Aloha. Hi. Hey, I'm just curious on the status of uh, the, the department's uh, request or position. Um, is the Department of Agriculture seeking all 93,000 acres or uh, something less than that as, as the ideal transfer? And what is it, where are you in that analysis? Um, currently, um, we are continuing to work with um, Chair Case, uh, Deputy Masuda, along with um, you know, Deputy of Ag, Morris Atta, and supporting staff um, we, we started in October um, of uh, 2019 um, being more, having the leadership of both departments more involved in the discussion. Um, we've exchanged um, lists of properties or um, parcels that we believe that are, um, we refer to as low hanging fruit that we believe that we could move quick, quicker um, in uh, coming to mutual uh, agreement on uh, whether the lands could be transferred. Um, we have seen um, movement on Maui where uh, we have seen lands come over. Um, we have transferred um, a few lands on Oahu. There weren't too many on this, um, this list that we developed in 2019. Um, and uh, we continue to exchange information um, because, you know, as you know, Senator, uh, the act requires that um, both um, boards, land board and board of agriculture uh, mutually agree uh, on the lands that are transferred. So, so, that, um, so I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get to what is the approximate agreement then <coughs> of, of all the lands in question? Are you, is there, one fifth, one half of the lands. I mean, where, where you're close to agreement. How how much of the lands are we considering there? Um, I'm going to ask my uh, deputy Morris Atta to come forward if he has that um, ballpark metric. Um, I do not have it off the top of my head. Morris, you're um, available. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, uh, chairs and uh, committee members. Uh, Part of the problem with um, quantifying it uh, you know, in that um, or characterizing it as one fifth or what proportion and all that is that we are having a challenge identifying what is the whole universe of lands that would be suitable or appropriate for transfer. So when you're asking us to kind of uh, characterize where we are, it's hard to give you a percentage or an amount <coughs> we haven't totally <coughs> agreed to or identified what the total amount is. And, th and that's the difficulty of why uh, it's, you know, um, hard to give you an, a response to that question. Okay, well, the, re the reason I ask is because in, in previous testimony, I thought I heard that some of the lands would rightfully remain with the LNR or, or at least be contracted to manage. So it's not as simple as some would have it that we just transfer all the land in one fell swoop. I don't, I don't know that the department of agriculture could handle it. Is, is that a fair understanding? Um, if, if all the land was just suddenly given to DOA, um, could you handle it? Uh, I, I believe your, your statement is correct in that you know, it, it, the, the intention was not just to turn over and hand everything over. It was, uh, th there was a process in place to assess the suitability of what, what was uh, 
should be transferred and what um, DOA would, would agree to as being an appropriate, um, you know, uh, parcel for agricultural use. And so th that's the process that that Actani was intended to um, create. So can you, oh, what, what, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, so can you kind of, just for some sake of scope, can you quantify like, you know, we, we think that, you know, a lot, maybe a third of it is, is something we, we would be ready to take and maybe a third we're not so sure and a third shouldn't, I mean, surely there's some idea of the magnitude of, of the request at this point, right? Because I, I really think this is cut straight to the primary problem with, with these discussions. So how close are we to identifying the low hanging fruit, say, and how much land or approximately what does that mean? So we, we did um, mutually come up with a, a list of low hanging fruit with those lands that had been previously identified. Um, again, in terms of our ability to manage, I mean, we, Department of Agriculture had, now has land management section that does, you know, what I believe to, to be a good job of managing agricultural land assets. And as, as more lands come over, you know, we've been adapting to it and um, we haven't seen any difficulty in managing any of that. The, I, I guess the challenge is that um, we are still in discussions about which lands are uh, suitable or, or intended to be transferred over from DLNR because we don't, we don't have the information regarding all of what is you know, defined as agricultural lands in terms of their inventory. So what we have is whatever was um, given to us from the LNR and of those lands, we've been, uh, you know, doing our due diligence to assess whether or not uh, they're in compliance and they're compatible for ag use. A significant amount of those um, property uh, leases and RPs that were transferred over had some issues, compliance issues, or suitability issues regarding whether or not they're really um, suitable for agricultural use. And in those instances, that's, that's where we, you know, notified DLNR that uh, we didn't believe these uh, um, should be transferred. And those are the lands that are in dispute that uh, I guess we're in the process of, um, uh, with trying and resetting aside back to the LNR where we, we believe that's the appropriate um, thing and, to do. And so, so then, uh, one more question, sure. Mr. Chair. So the, the, then this legislation, whichever way it goes, we've heard people say, well, I like this version or that version. What's the best outcome of this legislation? What does it, how does it propel this conversation in a positive direction? What's your well, I, best I, I'm estimate? Not I'm not certain because we're not the uh, authors of, of this bill. And so we're not certain what the intention of this uh, legislation was other than, other than to provide a vehicle for dispute resolution. And, um, you know, to that end, I, I guess it, it does provide a means for uh, dispute resolution. But we want to make sure, at least in our testimony, that if in fact that is the intent of this bill that it's implemented in a way that it, it doesn't just perpetuate what's occurring now, which, you know, uh, which is what I believe uh, some of the testimony that you heard uh, alluded to. Okay. okay, well, thank you, thank you, John. All right, okay, we're going to, um, uh, I'd like to add uh, some more comments on with this discussion as well. Senator um, Avaran, did you have a question? Yeah. This is for, I think, Morris and for Russell. Um, yes, sir. With regard to Department of Agriculture's um, inventory of lands, what's, just ballpark, what's the percentage of pasture lands that you, that you currently manage? Was that DOE's question? I'm yeah, to, to DOE. I need to check with staff. You know, in terms of the actual statistics, um, it's there. I should know that there's a significant uh, amount of pasture lands in in that inventory, um, only because you know 
pasture lands, you know, even though they're few in terms of numbers of dispositions or leases or RPs, tend to cover large tracts and areas of land. Whereas we have numerous smaller um, diversified ag type, type land, lands that would probably produce a, a larger number. I, and that's why I, I don't have that specific number. But if you're talking about acreage, I would say that um, pasture lands uh, constitute a pretty significant um, percentage of the lands that we manage. Well, of the lands that you want to return to DLNR, how, are any of them pasture lands? Not that I'm aware of. They tend to be, the ones that tend to be in dispute are the ones that are smaller or irregular or, uh, or isolated parcels that are uh, not tied to other ag agriculture activities. Some of those um, parcels, uh, well, I would say a lot of the parcels, the reason why we're returning it is because there are unresolved um, land management issues that um, basically they're not in compliance and they're, they're um, not suitable for um, farming management at, at this point in time. Or they, cons cons they include um, geographic features which are, you know, not suitable for ag, like, um, you know, th there are, you know, very mountainous or, um, or parcels that include, you know, waterways or, you know, other types of lands that <clears throat> even though zoned ag are not really suitable for, for growing anything or, or, you know, or raising anything, those are the kinds of um, disputed lands that we have been, you know, um, basically assessing as not suitable for, for transfer. So, and then for Russell, yes. on, the, um, on the testimony from the department, there's a, there's a map that shows the DLNR lands in the Ag District. So my question specifically is about the unencumbered DLNR lands shown. Are some of those lands that were formerly under lease or RP for pasture? Uh, formerly under a lease or it could be, but currently unencumbered. And I, so, I didn't prepare the map. I'm sorry, Senator. No, no. I mean, it, it, That's good. So, that's all I need to know. I just want to know, um, are any of those proposed for transfer or are being discussed for transfer? Unencumbered, un the unencumbered ag land? Yeah. See, uh, I think most recently, Act 90, uh, the discussion has transferred to some of those. If you recall, Act 90, the original Act 90, was actually ag leases. Hmm. Not pasture leases, but ag leases. So it wasn't unencumbered ag lands, it was ag leases. And so uh, to give you an idea of the amount of transfers that has occurred, it actually is how and completed. Totally, uh, right now, 19,000 or so acres have been transferred to the Department of Ag. Uh, on top of that, Department of Ag has about 5,000 or so acres on non-ag park lands, which is not, which is a separate entity uh, or separate operation of ag agricultural lands. Plus, ADC has another 19,000 of, agri of agricultural lands that we set aside to them. So we got a total of state lands of about 43,000 acres in agricultural with the ag, ag department. Uh, what my, my view when people ask me about Act 90 is we actually completed a lot of the transfers, most of them actually. What is left is those that are in dispute, as Morris was discussing, that they've told us for various reasons, it can be anything from not producing ag or not big enough operation or too small property or whatever. And they've decided not to take that operation, even though it's an agricultural piece. Okay. And then now what we also have is the pasture type operations, which we have transferred some pasture leases over, Ponohola Ranch on the Big Island, I think the um, Diamond B Ranch on, on Maui, and, and, and there's some various other ones that we transferred. Now what is really the subject matter of a lot of this discussion today about this bill is those pasture leases that the department, in particular the forestry division, has a particular interest in those lands and they have asked to hold on to those lands uh, 
number one. And number two, it, it, where appropriate, we wanted to at least accommodate the pasture operation by providing for what we believe is the benefits of being at Department of Ag, which is the lease extension, direct negotiation, and perhaps modification of the rent so that we could consider other factors in, in, the, uh, in determining the rent. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, that's a big change. Uh, we appreciate that income, uh, your income as well. And going back to the to the map, I think um, it's really interesting, but it gives us a clear picture uh, uh, of identifying those unencumbered lands. And if you look at statewide, I think most of the unencumbered lands uh, in ag dis districts are pretty much on the Big Island and more in the Puna area uh, and south. And so uh, I'm not sure if, um, if even Department of Ag would want those lands because as we know, they're all zoned uh, and most of them are zoned um, uh, where it's unfeasible for agriculture. Uh, Chair would like to add that um, going forward, and I think um, Russell did um, uh, explicitly say that the intent of Act 90, which was, I was the introducer of that measure uh, and thanks, we have it. But yes, it identified the important, more important lands for agriculture use. Uh, and so I think I'd like to um, uh, work with Senator Gabbard going forward to revisit Act 90 and see how we can, um, if there, we need to revisit and, and look at, at where we're going forward. Um, any questions? Senator Gabbard. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to clarify something with Russell. Russell, you'd mentioned the 19,000 acres that have been transferred from DLNR <coughs> Department of Ag, correct? Not yeah. a cap ADC. ADC was another 19,000, right? right? I have my notes that that 19,000 acres is approximately 15 percent, one five, of the total. Is that what you have, or 15 percent of of the total land? Is no. No, I mean, it is, it is a lot larger than that as far as what has been approved by the Board of Ag and the Department of Land, the Board of, land, Board of, Board of land and Natural Resources, which was Act 90. Right. Now, later on, there was discussion about transferring all ag lands in the state of Hawaii. That's a different breed, and that, that was not approved by any of, any of the boards. And, and so if that's what you're referring to, the percentage, I'm not sure. But, but as far as the 19,000, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, he's, he's on board. It, it, it's substantially more, a higher percentage of that, right? I think it's more like 90 something percent of the both of both boards approval. Kevin, how are you doing? Yeah, someone thinks, um, yeah, I'd say it's, it's around there, 90%. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? Chair would like to move on to this because we're with time limited and there's more on the agenda. Uh, any more questions? Then on HB 469, um, we do have uh, in support 27 testimonies in support in opposition, uh, 13 with three comments. Um, let's proceed then with HB 241. One second, I need my 243. Um, I need my agenda back. 243. 243, two, yeah. My eyesight on the small, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, can I have um, the agenda back? Okay, much better. Okay, HB 243, and this is relating to sea level rise adaption, and it requires each executive branch department to identify existing and planned facilities <coughs> that are vulnerable to sea level rise, flooding impacts, and natural hazards, assess options for mitigation impacts of sea level uh, rise. Um, Chair then would like to uh, call on, let's see, Two, four, three. I'm getting mixed up with one second. I need two, four, three. I got four, six. Okay, the next page. It's Ms. Myers. Okay, you know what? Let me, I'll just go with this. Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, call on uh, then um, uh, Luke Myers. Is that correct, 243? 
Department of Defense, uh, you need to unmute yourself. How about that? Can you hear me okay. now? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Luke Myers. I'm the administrator of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. IEMA stands uh, on a written testimony report of House Bill 243, and we are available for discussion as necessary. Thank you so much. Okay. Office of Planning. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. My name is Justine Niki Pelli. I am here on behalf of Office of Planning. Um, the Office of Planning supports the intent of this measure and offers comments particularly to align um, this measure with um, a law that was passed last year which um, added sea level rise um, coordination responsibilities to our mandate. Um, we also just mentioned that the state required um, Ocean Resources Management Plan does highlight a portion of our focus areas that we'll be implementing through the Coastal Zone Management Program, um, which includes coastal hazards and development, um, which would include sea level rise, and we're available for questions if uh, there are any. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, we do have uh, testimony from the uh, Climate Change Mitigation and Adaption Commission. Anu, are you there? Aloha chairs, vice chairs, committee members. My name is Anu Hittel, and thank you very much for uh, hearing this bill. I'm testifying on behalf of the Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission, and have submitted written testimony and support. Um, I staff the commission, which has 20 members, uh, it has department heads at the state and county levels, four legislators, senators, uh, Chair Inouye and Chair Gabbard. Uh, you know how important this work is because you have served on this commission since it was born in 2017 uh, by Act 32. It is co-chaired by DLNR's Chair Case and the Office of Planning's Director Evans, and it guides the priorities of the state's climate response. Sea level rise is a priority as determined by the Commission in 2018, and HB 243 will effectively address this priority. Thank you very much, and I'm here for any questions. Okay, any questions of any of the presenters? Senator Gabbard, any questions you'd like to ask? I'm all good, Chair, thanks. Okay, um, Mayor, uh, Office of Planning again. I have a question for you. Aloha, Chair. Yes. Uh, Justin. Justina. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, there's a recommendation um, for uh, that you offered in your testimony, um, particularly on page five, where you want to add the Office of Planning. Is that correct? Is, my, is that my understanding of the amendment? Yes, that's correct. Um, as written in our testimony last session, there was a law that passed that added sea level rise adaptation coordination to our mandate. And so we just wanted to um, align this measure with that change from last session. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, members. If not, let's proceed then uh, with SCR 75. And this is requesting the Office of Planning to convene uh, an interdisciplinary task force to develop a framework for a sea level adaption and resilience plan for the Waikiki uh, district. Um, okay, um, the University of Hawaii uh, system, we do have interim dean, uh, William Chapman. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for giving me time to be here to answer any questions. Okay, uh, thank you, and you're on uh, in support, right? Yes, of okay. course, and uh, but there, we have submitted testimony. Oh, okay. thank you, you very much. You have an appropriate background for the sea level rise as well. So. Thank you for your input. <laughs> um, Office of Planning, um, Justina. Aloha, chairs, vice chairs, and members, again. Justine Nikipelli for Office of Planning. Um, we support the intent of this resolution. 
um, and offers comments, um, particularly um, you know, for the significant assets of Waikiki, um, you know, just commentary that you know, there's, it's imperative to have you know, a dedicated team of professionals for this. Um, presently, we don't have dedicated support for this resolution in a full-time capacity, although we would like to. Um, our staff is for the CZM program is primarily funded through a cooperative agreement with NOAA, and we pre um, pre state our tasks with NOAA um, on an annual and sometimes uh, biannual basis. Um, also, because of the complexities of sea level rise adaptation and the multiple stakeholders within this special district, um, I, we offered an amendment to page four to extend the um, time of the report for, to the legislature, noting that you know, between the uh, end of the legislative session and um, 20 days prior to the convening of 2022 would be this um, December. Okay, so Thank move it another year. Available. Your request is to move it another year? That's correct. Thank okay. you. Okay, all right. Any uh, questions, members, on SCR 75? Mr. Chair, this, this is Carl Rhodes. Yes, Senator for, Rhodes. Thank you. For uh, uh, Mr. Chapman, I can't quite tell who. Is it Dean Chapman? Uh, you can call me Bill Chapman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> does does uh, Waikiki have, I mean, are there special considerations with Waikiki that the rest of the island and the state don't have? Uh, I think probably the only thing immediately is, of course, this is our major revenue system. Producer, but on top of that, it also is a special district as well. And in terms of the, geo the, the geology or the hydrology, is it? Well, as, as you know, a lot of it's built up and built up over the years, and even now it's going through a, a beach reclamation project right now. So, um, but I mean, it's a, basically a large sandbar that became a uh, resort area. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you. Just to follow up, Dean, um, to the same question, um, how do you compare uh, Kanapali uh, Beach uh, as well, similarly to Waikiki? Uh, less built up, of course, and less of a long history of, uh, of uh, development. I would think that's the main difference. Oh, okay. It seems like Kanapali, I guess, has a much larger area with the sandbars, right? And it had a, I think it had a natural beach in place at the time of its first uh, exploitation as a resort area. But as you know, I think all of you probably know Waikiki. If you look at the old photos, there was very little of a uh, little beach at Waikiki. In fact, I always used to wonder about the the natatorium project, people were afraid it would, if we worked on the natatorium, it would take away from the beach, but it's actually created the, uh, a bit of beach there in front of the Kamana Hotel. So I think in a lot of ways, the, the beach has been sort of grabbed by the groins. And then, as you know, early on, a lot of it came from Molokai. And then more recently, it's been um, sort of brought back up on the shore through an expensive process of reclamation. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, members, I, I understand that we do have another agenda with AEN and it's the lead. So uh, if there's uh, no other um, uh, discussions with regards to the first uh, three items that Waterland is um, uh, the lead on, I uh, would like to, Senator Gavitt, if it's okay, shall we go into decision making and, um, and uh, ask for a recess? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, That's good. thank you. Okay, both committees are going into recess for decision making. Um, the committees on water, land, and the committee on agriculture and environment is going into decision making on its agenda items on Wednesday, uh, 105 p.m. 
Uh, the first uh, recommendation on HB 469, House Draft 1, uh, relating to the transfer of non-agriculture parklands. Uh, ch the both chairs agree that we'd like to um, recommend that we look at an SD1, uh, looking at DLNR's recommendation on um, the uh, on plan B as in boy, and also into some other considerations from the Cattlemen's uh, Association as well. We will come up with a recommendation, uh, an SD1, and make sure that it's circulated before Monday's um, uh, hearing as well uh, for your input. Um, on HB 243, uh, relating to sea level rise, uh, we'd like to offer uh, uh, for an SD1 uh, and take in OP's amendments um, as well. Uh, and I'd like to read that pursuant to Act 45, Session Laws of 2020, legislature amended um, the OP responsibilities by adding sea level adaption coordination to its mandate in order to serve more effectively this task respe respectfully offer the following amendments. And on page five, lines nine to 13, uh, each department shall establish staff level points of contact with relevant expertise to build internal capacity and work with Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaption Commission staff and the Office of Planning to improve interagency coordination for sea level rise adaption, flooding and resilience, including um, additional page five, lines 14 to 21 um, on, on C. Each department shall submit a report to the governor, legislature, Office of Planning and the Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaption Commission. Um, within uh, OP, the Coast CZM program uh, receives funding from NOAA for many years and working on aspects of shoreline management and sea level rise adaption options for uh, Hawaii's uh, shoreline. So further, um, uh, the recently updated 2020 Ocean Resource Management Plan required under the HRS 205A, the CCM program has identified three focus areas, one of which is addressing coastal development and the chronic coastal hazards such as sea level rise. Um, and that's, um, and also we do have um, uh, some technical um, and um, amendments to be made to this as well. Uh, any discussions on HB 243? Um, hearing none, Senator Misalucha for the votes and to recognize that Senator Agran is on Zoom. Okay. Uh, so chair votes aye. So for Committee on Water and Land, as regards to HB 243 HD1, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Agran. Hmm. Vice Chair Agaran, you're muted. Uh, Senator, um, Senator Agaran, unmute yourself. Okay, we'll come back to you uh, next. Uh, Senator Misalucha votes aye. Senator Rivier. Aye. Senator Riv uh, Favela. Aye. Um, Senator Agaran, we're waiting for your vote. I don't think he can hear. Oh my. Senator Agaran. Excused. Uh, excused. Okay. Okay. You have four eyes. Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. On SCR, oh, I'm sorry. Senator Gabbard, your committee on agriculture. Thank you, thank you Chair. And for AEN, uh, same recommendation. Chair both side, Vice Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Measure passes. Thank you, members. Thank you. SCR 75, and this is the uh, Office of Planning to convene the Interdisciplinary Task Force um, for the Sea Level Adaption and Resilience Plan for the Waikiki District. Chair's recommendation that we pass um, with amendments and create an SD1, just uh, merely changing um, the implementation and the dates uh, report to the legislature, change from two, 2022 to 2023. Okay, um, any discussion? 
Hearing none, uh, for the Committee on Water and Land, a Chair goes aye. So Committee on Water and Land, this is for SCR 75. Chair's recommendation is passed with amendments. <coughs> for all members present, are there any reservations? Any ayes? I mean, any noes? Your uh, recommendations adopted, Chair. Okay, thank you. Committee on Same Land. Mm -hmm. Same recommendation for AEN. Um, Chair Lewis Saib, Chair Nishihara. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Thank you, members. Measure passes. Okay, it's your show, uh, Senator uh, Gamp. Ch uh, Chair, before we uh, uh, adjourn, I wanted to, I forgot to mention that uh, on the HP 469, Yes. For that, yeah, for AEN, that would be March 22nd at 1.05 p.m. in room 229 and video conference. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, uh, I think we have to adjourn and come in on another Zoom. Um, no, I don't think so because we're on. You do? You do? I, here, I'm going to come back to my seat WTL and then return. Land. Sorry, Chair Gabbard, the hearing notices time slot is WTL. Yeah, so oh. you can continue on. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Well, um, my, my computer is yeah. there, so I'm going to. All right, so uh, I'm going to order the joint um, 110 agenda of AEN uh, Water Land. Do I have to go through all the stuff again? The, uh, I don't think so. You're still on the same agenda, same time okay. slot. Okay, 110. So first one up is HB 247 relating to ag lands. This amends certain land subdivision and condominium property regime laws related to ag land as recommended pursuant to Act 278, Session Laws of Hawaii 2019, to ensure condominium property regime projects within the ag district are used for ag purposes. And first up, the testifiers we have uh, Carol Richelieu from DCCA, EDL Real Estate Commission. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, chairs, the members of the committee, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, to you as well. <laughs> My name is Carol Richelieu. I'm testifying on behalf of Michael Pang, who's the chairperson of the Real Estate Commission. The commission stands on its testimony for the bill. We're available for questions and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Carol. Next is uh, Mary Alice Evans, Office of Planning. With me is Laureen Maki from our Land uh, Use Division. Uh, we strongly support this bill. Um, we uh, believe that this will help uh, save the fragment, prevent the fragmentation, further fragmentation of our good ag lands. Uh, thank you. And it, uh, Lorene is also here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Alice. Next is Isaac Choi from uh, DOT, Department, excuse me, Department of Taxation. Hi, hey, Chair, he's not present. Next is Phyllis Shimabukor-Geiser from Department of Ag. Department of Ag here. Oh, she'll come, oh, there's Morris. Good afternoon, Chair. Um, uh, Morris Nathan on behalf of the Department of Ag. We'll stand on our, our written testimony. Uh, thank you. In support? Okay. In support. Yes. Next is Michael Munakata from Little Pump Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair. We'll stand on our testimony in support. Thank you, Micah. Nicole Gabase from Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Nicole here. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Gabbard. We stand on our written testimony report. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Brian Miyamoto from Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committees. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. As a member of the stakeholder group that was convened by OP, the Hawaii Farm Bureau does stand on its written testimony in support. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Jacob Wormser from, uh, he's an attorney at law. Aloha, my name is Jacob Wormser. I'm a real estate attorney on Maui, and I have extensive experience with the Maui County Ag Code and EBR form of ownership. I strongly oppose House Bill 247, 
and I authored a petition against the bill that to date has nearly 900 signatures. Uh, as you know, this bill is based entirely on a study of ag building and zoning code problems on the island of Oahu. Uh, apparently, the Honolulu County's Ag 1 and Ag 2 zones allow multiple farm dwellings on large ag properties without sufficient environmental and infrastructure requirements as part of the county's permitting process. I agree that these large-scale ag developments are a major problem on Oahu. However, each county is solely responsible for its own land use regulation. Maui County does not share any of these issues. All ag lots, whether two acres or 2,000 acres, are allowed to build only two farm dwellings under the Maui County Code. It is unlawful for the state legislature to take over the Honolulu County Council and Planning Department's job and try to fix county-specific regulatory and enforcement failures. You must kill this bill and forward these concerns to the Honolulu County Council and Planning Department, where they belong. Or at the bare minimum, all sections of this bill must be amended to exclude the neighbor islands. Thank you, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, That's all the testifiers. Members, any questions? Yeah, I have a question, Senator, on uh, chair. Um, yes. And, and you know, this brings to mind, and I'm glad the previous um, uh, speaker uh, mentioned the testifier um, and for us from the neighbor islands, I didn't read this as an Oahu um, bill, but it's really interesting. Uh, my comment would be, if it is, uh, I agree though that when you look at the, um, you know, with the income, um, in, particularly in the testimony of um, the Department of Ag uh, and in the bill with regards to um, farm dwellings on agriculture lands are necessary to a farm and where the agriculture activity provides income of no less than $10,000 per year uh, to a family um, and verified by the GT. Let me share with you many of lands that have been sold in ag and ag, ag activity and bought um, and created their own farms uh, and no different from what um, one of my sons and daughter manages seven acres, and we do have most of the seven acres are already in fruit trees. And I'll tell you, we don't even make $10,000 for one season. And so that's a, a dispute that I'd like to add because there are lands available on neighbor islands that are smaller lots uh, and not the big guys. And who wants to create uh, ag activity and sustainability of food supply and I mean, we just don't make that kind of monies. Uh, so my question is with that, Senator Gabbard. Thank you very much. Did Jake want to address that or? I'm sure, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I kind of feel like this bill would actually punish the very people it's intended to protect. Um, I think that you know, subsistence family farmers uh, all across the state would now have to come up with a way to make $10,000 in agricultural income just to build their house. Um, and I don't think that's fair. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think that um, that $10,000 income requirement is a major problem. Um, and I would also add that here on, on the county of Maui, um, that income requirement is actually in the county code. It's a, it's a county code requirement. Um, you can build what's called a farm labor dwelling here. Uh, if you can prove that um, you have over $35,000 of annual farming income. And so again, I, I like the intent of this bill and I'm all for supporting agriculture, but I think that, that these, these type of regulations, which are essentially building permit regulations, you're essentially re regulating what somebody mm. needs to do to get a building but permit, I think those regulations area. must be in the county, mm. in the county code, area. not in the state agricultural designation. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Any other questions for our testifiers? Uh, members, I just want to remind you, we have a 2.30 hard deadline here, so we're going to move on to the next measure, sure. HB, 
HB 553 HD2 uh, relating to the protection of sharks establishes an offense of knowingly capturing, entangling, or killing a shark in state marine waters and provides penalties and fines. With certain exemption, requires the Department of Land and Natural Resources to establish rules to achieve certain objectives. Is Judy Lemus from the University of Hawaii. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, Chairs, Gabbard and Inouye, and members of the committees. Um, UH will stand on its written testimony concerning the intent and language of the bill and the role of science in shark conservation. Uh, but we would like to note that this bill still contains some problematic language. Uh, we feel that a more consultative process with um, managers and researchers and fishers during the formulation of the bill probably would have resulted in a more effective and impactful measure. Um, but we'll, we will stand on our testimony and are available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Next is Brad Wong with the uh, OHA. Hey, Chair, he's not present. Next is David Sakota for DLNR. Good afternoon, chairs and committee members. Um, DLNR will stand on its written testimony. Thank you. Next is Lisa Bishop, Friends of Hanalma Bay. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs. Uh, Friends of Panama Bay stands on our written testimony in strong support of House Bill 553 with some additional amendments that we have submitted. Mahalo. For the Thank young you, Lisa. To testify. Mahalo, Lisa. Next is Inga Gibson, uh, Board of the Fishes, and 16 other organizations. Well, mahalo, Chair Gabbard, Chair Inouye. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak in strong support of HB 553. Um, as you all know, um, this is a measure that we have worked on for a number of years with much outreach uh, to the community. Uh, you may recall that this same bill related to protection of race species was enacted in 2019. A uh, last session, uh, Chair Gabbard and Chair Inouye's uh, SB 2717 passed the House, crossed over to the Senate, and unfortunately died in its last committee due to the pandemic and uh, missed its last hearing. So I know you all are very familiar with this effort. Um, as you know, this bill would not apply to the um, accidental or incidental capture of sharks um, while in the lawful course of fishing. Um, that's exactly what ethical fishers do now, is if they accidentally capture a shark, um, that they would release the shark. So we have made some amendments to try to clarify uh, the concerns of those few fishers that um, may worry that they may be incidentally targeted um, and uh, hope that those amendments address their concerns. I uh, also want to note that um, emerging research uh, earlier this year showed that we have about a 71% decline in oceanic um, a shark species and further uh, another study in 2019 showed that comparing the northwestern Hawaiian islands to the main Hawaiian islands we see about a 90% uh, reduction in abundance. So this is definitely an issue. There are no laws right now that explicitly prohibit intentional killing, trophy hunting of sharks, the killing of sharks for their jaws or teeth. And while we did pass a landmark shark fin bill, thanks to all of your support back in 2010, sadly, this is still necessary. And again, having had the opportunity to go through uh, all the testimony, um, I think our proposed amendments, um, in addition to those proposed by OHA, will address uh, the concerns uh, of those. And as for the research um, exemption, uh, we support uh, DLNR's position, um, and I believe that they're available to answer any questions. Um, just want to follow up that some of those researchers unfortunately also opposed our 2010 shark fin bill using these same um, kind of arguments and we all know how successful that has been. Sorry, Inga, you're out of time. Okay, that, thank sounds, you very sounds, much. Sounds, thank you. Uh, next is Ted Boland from Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. Thank you, Chairs. The Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition is in strong support of uh, this bill with some amendments. Um, we'll stand on our written testimony. Just want to say that sharks are incredibly important for ocean health, and we need to do more to protect them. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Oh, uh, Ted. Next is Mike Nakachi with the Moana Ohana. Mike. He was there earlier. Mike Nakachi, are you there? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, next is 
Oh, there he is. Mike, you're on. Take off your mute. Aloha, Chair. Can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, again, I'm in strong support of this bill. Um, I humbly come before you with a uh, uh, spiritual and compelling background of uh, Puo Kohola. I'm on the shores of Pelikani on the island of Mokuo Kiabi. I offer the testimony with ancestral knowledge behind me and uh, looking to the future. I come before you, Chair Gabbard and Chair Inoy, with aloha for Aina, aloha for Malama Aina, and aloha for Aina Momona. All of these traditional and customary practices um, need to apply here and we need uh, no more suppression of host culture. As a member of Mono Ohana and also Kia Ikanaloa, I come before you on the shores of Uhu, of uh, right next to, uh, I'm kind of thrown off because I've never really done this off uh, in, the, in, the, in the wild here. And um, right behind me is Haleo Kapuni, a place that Kamehameha once stood and um, offered Ho'okupu to two very large chief and chiefesses sharks called Uukanipo and Ka'aipai. We cannot forget that for me as a modern day Kanaka, and as a modern day Kahumano, that sharks are constantly targeted um, by industrial fisheries, by local uh, fishermen, and we have a very blessed opportunity to go into the water and practice every day this traditional practice. And 90% of every single mano that we see, whether it be mano kihikihi, white tip sharks, black tip sharks that are generally right behind me, have trading line, have hooks. Mano deserve protection because they were a sacred being. Mike, I'm very sorry. We have to cut you off. We have a two minute time limit. Very sorry. Yeah. Appreciate your testimony. Oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um, thank you. Next, next is Carl Meyer. Carl. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chairs, Committee members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Carl Meyer, shark researcher for 30 years. Uh, I'm opposing this bill for the following reasons. It will produce no meaningful added protection for sharks because targeted fishing for sharks, the focus of the bill, is a rare activity in Hawaii. Two thirds of the Hawaiian chain is already completely protected from commercial and recreational fishing, thanks to Papa Hanao Mukurkea. In the remaining third, we lack the intensive targeted fisheries responsible for depleting shark populations in other regions. There's no market for coastal sharks in Hawaii. Never see coastal sharks for sale in local fish markets, supermarkets, restaurants, or by the side of the road. The bill is unenforceable. All fishing methods used to target sharks can be legitimately used to catch other species of fish. So it's effectively impossible to prove that sharks are being specifically targeted. Fishers who inadvertently capture sharks cannot be distinguished from those targeting sharks. By their own testimony, DLNR lacks the resources to enforce even current regulations that require controlling by boat. The bill does not address the more significant issue of shark bycatch, where sharks are inadvertently captured and fishing for other species. Bycatch is the only area where real conservation gains are to be made with coastal sharks in Hawaii because the state lacks the intensive targeted fishing responsible for shark declines in other regions. There's been no meaningful consultation with key stakeholders, such as researchers and the local fishing community, to develop effective shark conservation policies. We need to engage all the stakeholders in the process and base our conservation policies on a clear, fact-based understanding of substantive threats to local shark populations. Effective shark cons conservation could be facilitated by convening a task force to characterize and quantify human impacts to sharks in Hawaii and develop carefully considered recommendations on how to mitigate those threats. Thank you, Thank you Carl. Sorry to, sorry to cut you off. Mahalo. Next is Clayton Kubo. 
Hi, Chair, Chair. I'm present. Yeah, Chair, just to uh, recognize your time limit too as well. So if they can just stand on their testimony and also we can move to your next one, which I have no problem yes. if you want to speed it up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mark Royer. Mark, we're running out of time. If you'd like to stand on your testimony. If not, go ahead. You got uh, yes, my name is Mark Royer, and I stand on my, uh, my written testimony um, in opposition of this bill. And I would like to further reiterate the, um, I believe we can develop meaningful protection for trucks in Hawaii, uh, and it should involve the input of all stakeholders, including scientists and, local, and those from the local fishing community, and that can be achieved uh, through a task force. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo. Next is Kim Holland. Again, we're up, up against a hard deadline. If you'd like to stand on your testimony, I see that you're opposed. Yes, I'm strongly opposed, and I do also support the concept of stepping back and including the entire community in formulating a way forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, any questions? That's all the testifiers. Okay, moving on to the last measure, HB 247, HD 2, appropriates funds to the Department of Ag for the mitigation and control of the two-line spittle bug and recovery of the rangelands damaged by the, inv uh, the invasive pest. Uh, UH, Dean Nick Nicholas Comerford. Chairs, Vice Chairs, committee members, please stand on your testimony and support, and they're available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, Give up a Geyser with the Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chairs. Uh, the Department of Ag stands on it, um, written testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Munakata from uh, Ulupono. Ulupono stands on his testimony and support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Micah and Nicole Galassi from the Catalogs Council. We stand on a testimony in strong support. Thank you for hearing this measure. Mahalo, Nicole. Brian Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair. The Hawaii Farm Bill Stone has written testimony and support. And John Garibaldi uh, from the Local Food Coalition. I did see that. Thank you, Chair. We stand on our uh, written testimony as well. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Any questions, members? All right. Let's go to the breakout room. I said everybody not going to the breakout room. Okay, uh, reconvening the uh, 110 joint hearing of the uh, Agriculture Environment Committee and the Committee on Water and Land. Having conferred, we'll start, talk, start off with HB 247, amending the certain uh, land subdivision and condominium property regime laws related to ag land as recommended pursuant to Act 278. Session laws of Hawaii 2019 to ensure condominium property routine projects within the agricultural district are used for agricultural purposes. On this, uh, the chairs, before we need some more time to uh, confirm this, and so I'd like to defer decision making until uh, March 22nd at 106 p.m. in room 229 and also video conference. On the second measure, HB 553 HD 2. Uh, relating to the protection of sharks establishes an, off, an offense of knowingly capturing, entangling, or killing a shark in state marine waters, waters and provides penalties and fines, provides exemptions, and requires the Department of Land and Natural Resources to establish rules to achieve certain objectives. The Chair's recommendation here would be to <coughs> members in 2010, the legislature we acted uh, we banned shark finning and products, but we failed to protect whole sharks from intentional killing. So this bill would correct that oversight to better protect these apex predators of the ocean. So the recommendation would be to pass HB 553 HD2 with amendments uh, based on the combined of OHA, DLNR, and For the Fishes, and 16 other organizations will amend the bill as follows. On page two, lines three to five, will amend the purpose clause to read, quote, the purpose of this act is to protect sharks 
for their ecological value while not criminalizing the accidental capture and release of sharks that may be intentionally captured while fishing for other species as allowed by law or rule, unquote. On page two, line 11, we'll add the word um, intentionally, quote unquote, before knowingly. On page four, we'll remove lines four to nine as incidental capture while fishing for other species is clarified in the purpose clause by including the highest men's rea, that's uh, legalese, which means state of mind, uh, and will be further addressed in DLNR's rulemaking process. On page four, lines 18 to 20, we'll clarify that DLNR may, quote unquote, may, instead of shall, adopt rules pursuant to chapter 91 to implement the section and to ensure that the incidental capture and release of sharks while targeting other species is not a violation. And then on page five, per OHA, we'll remove lines four to six uh, relating to subsistence take Native Hawaiian cultural and subsistence practices are already exempt in section G as per our state constitution and any further take of individual sharks can be addressed in the DLNR rulemaking process. And we'll also correct the effective date to uh, January 1st, 2022 and any necessary tech amendments. Any discussion? Okay. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. Aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Thank you, members. Measure passes. <clears throat> Committee on Water Land, same recommendation on HB 553 with amendments. Um, Chair goes aye. Chair, with five members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. And then the uh, final measure on the agenda, the 110 agenda, is HB 237, HD2, appropriates funds to the Department of Ag for the mitigation and control of the two-line spittle bug and recovery of the rangelands damaged by this invasive pest. So members, the invasive species uh, two-line spittle bug is a bug, is a big threat for the health and vitality of pasture lands. Uh, we've conferred, the chairs have conferred, the recommendation would be to add in the $659,000 appropriation from the original version of this bill, both fiscal years for the Department of Ag. And then we'll also correct the effective date to July 1st, 2021. Any discussion? Seeing none, chair votes aye. Vice Chihara? Okay. Senator Ocasio? Reservations. Senator Favela? Reservation. Senator Rhodes. Aye. The measure passes. Thank you, members. Thank you. Committee on Waterland, same recommendation on HB 237.